I am fully aware of the importance of promptly releasing that footage. I have not forgotten. The summer of 1981 was the time when the following occurred to me. At the time, I was 19 years old. At that point in my life, I had already come to the conclusion that there could be no God, no supreme power orchestrating events on Earth. If such were the case, his performance was lacking. Once I made this decision, everything began to spiral downward, even though I didn't know it at the time. I turned into someone who was mostly concerned with themselves and not much with others. Tachycardia has been a problem for me for a while now, so I should probably address that. Up until that moment, no cardiac condition had ever been officially identified with me. If someone had asked me if I had any cardiac issues, I would have denied it. Experiencing dizziness and verging on fainting spells as my heart rate increased was something I assumed was completely natural. As we drove from Los Angeles to San Francisco, one night, I found myself in the back seat. My nausea and racing heart were out of nowhere. Then I saw a kaleidoscope of colors as everything began to swirl. After then, a gloomy, damp feeling washed over me. My heart sank. My fear has never been greater. Because I was so terrified, I uttered the word, Jesus. I saw a brawl break out right away. An entity bathed in white light appeared to be engaged in combat with this darkness. Darkness was engulfed by brightness the second after. I fell to my knees in adoration before this celestial presence. Warmth washed over me, and the deepest love engulfed me. It was an electric field that vibrated through my entire being. Unconditional love, which is often talked about, has never felt so real to me. I am aware that we had a discussion, but I am unable to recall the details. As far as I'm concerned, it was a period of recovery and rejuvenation for me. The following second, I found myself suspended in midair, gliding along the highway as I peered down at my reflection in the rearview mirror. I could see it was me seated there, but I was still in the air. There was no need for fear or confusion on my part. Everything was exactly right. On my left side, someone was standing. It wasn't the same being I'd been with before, in my opinion. It seemed like he was wearing a white robe or something. I could tell it was a he. His identification didn't appear to matter, so I never gave him a second glance. It seems like he was there to show me the way. Rather than forcing myself to go, it was as if he had already taken or guided me. Our journey across space commenced. The rapid movement of the planets and stars made me aware of this. It was thrilling. I had never felt so liberated. I don't know what the schedule is for the upcoming episodes. Each one was its own episode, but I can't seem to place them in any particular sequence or timeline. A white chamber appeared before my very eyes. It appeared relatively contained, though I wouldn't go so far as to say it had walls. Perhaps the reason I refer to it as a room is because its dimensions were defined by the light that penetrated it. A man clad in a white robe stood behind a podium that held a book. It had to have been the Bible's book of life. I could tell. Really some reason. I kept thinking. Ah. Oh, that stuff was for real. No matter what you call him. God. Allah. The Great Spirit. Or anything else. Whatever it is, the God I had been taught was completely at odds with what I seen in the world. All faiths ultimately point to the same Creator, but they describe Him in different ways. This Creator is also the source of the inner light of love that motivates us to do good deeds. As I recently came to understand, I felt like I already knew this, rather than being told it explicitly. I arrived at what seemed like a room, maybe even a space. My life was shown to me. Even if it were my whole life, I would be unable to recall every detail. Just the past week or two, after I stopped believing in God, is all I can recall at the moment. It troubled me greatly to see how self-centered I had been and to feel the suffering I had inflicted on one individual. My deepest sentiments of shame came from my tendency to inflict pain on others, my dishonesty, 
my insensitivity to their emotions, and my general selfishness. Despite what I had been led to believe, it seemed like nobody cared that I was gay at the time. Somewhere else was this chamber. There appeared to be additional people present. I had the impression that some of them were men and some were women, but I couldn't place anyone. Someone showed me a diagram. To me, it seemed like a representation of choices, with one choice leading to further possibilities, and so on. In essence, there are results to every action. At least that's how it felt when I started getting all the information I was being taught by them. Rather of coming to me in the form of words, like you and I do, they were more like coherent ideas. Words and photos are usually how I express my thoughts. This is the way the information was received by me, in the form of mental images and words. In the same way that I could formulate a question in my head, I already knew the answer, along with the how, why, and any other questions that may follow. The cosmos is like a jigsaw puzzle. Everything fits perfectly. It all made perfect sense. I must keep this in mind. I thought at the time. In the distance, I could make out a picturesque valley teeming with people as I glanced to my right. Overseeing it all was an observer. In my heart, I knew it was Jesus. A line appeared as I looked down. Yes, like the others I met, I had a spiritual body, and my foot was crossing the threshold to join them. What followed was the warning that there's no turning back after I crossed a certain boundary. It would imply that your demise is inevitable. As corny as it sounds, I had no idea I was dying or was about to die until that moment. I had never considered it before. Despite seeing it in the car, the fact that I was detached from my body remained a mystery to me. Finally, I felt whole. The thought crossed my mind, and I chuckled, thinking, this isn't how I pictured death. I wanted to stay, I declared. My mother and the other passengers in the car with me would be severely wounded because they would not understand. Someone warned me. At some point, someone showed me a map and told me to go to Virginia. Thought I could make out the lights of the heavens as the angels sang their praises. Dusk had fallen. I was seated at the rear of the vehicle the moment it occurred to me. A really exquisite melody was audible to me. For a long time, I kept quiet about what had transpired. For the following few days, I felt completely out of my element. I longed to return. Despite my best efforts to retain all the information I had absorbed during my period of heightened understanding, I had an innate sense that I could do nothing to make that happen. However, it is no longer visible. The fact that I was able to forget much of what I learned about my NDE makes me question why some people are lucky enough to do so. The repost for today is complete. Is everyone's opinion the same? Please share your thoughts in the space provided. I value your opinions as always. Be blessed and remain safe until we meet again.